Uh, what city are we in now? Tarsus. Tarsus. Okay. <laughs> what did you say? Moving towards Syrian border. Okay. Unbelievable? Unbelievable. We're looking for a character named Orpheus, right? Yeah. Not Morpheus. Yeah. Orpheus. <laughs> God has a son from this earth, and it's everybody in Jesus Christ. Your opportunity to live is now. Yes, you, you don't get a second chance. This is your chance. The only one. You can either accept truth, what God's saying in the Bible, and what your eyes are showing you around you. It's not in our imagination, is it? What's yeah. happening right now in the world is actually happening. It's about to get a lot worse really fast. And then you're just pushing off the inevitable. If you don't deal with it today and you don't start ripping the band-aid off, it's going to hurt even worse because this computer, guess what? We're telling you this whole Orpheus thing that we've been talking to you about, this second temple teaching of them coming in and conquering the pagans with Jesus Christ, just teaching you the Orpheus version of them, as Jesus Christ that has double X's, double marks, double columns, double crosses, literally is the mark. Yeah, this is going to get them in trouble and you in trouble. The computer knows it. It understands all of that. It's going to force everybody on the planet to take it. Now, when you watch the rest of this video, you'll understand why. I'm telling you this now. I knew that there wouldn't be anything standing on this earth. And that's all I'm going to say right now. Because there's nothing else I need to say at the moment. Uh, and I remember discussing this when when my wife and I, when we knew this in, uh, when we knew this in 2020... I kept having images in my head, and I'm not saying I was seeing visions or anything like that. It's just, you know, your memory, and, you know, you you try to analyze things. If you're somebody like me, you overanalyze stuff sometimes, and um, it's really bizarre, though, that it was this image. Out of all the cities I seen collapsing across the planet, out of, and I've been to a lot of, you know, I was pretty well-traveled. Uh, you know, considering my background, at least, um, pretty well traveled in my life, and I've been to a lot of places. One place, though, it's bizarre, that I never went to, never wanted to, uh, was uh, Paris, France. Yeah, so it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't it be like a city right off the top of my list. My wife, you know, uh, she wasn't, you know, my wife's been there. I never went. Yeah. Anyways, out of all the cities. The image I kept having run through my head in December of 2020 was the image of uh, downtown Paris crumbling to the ground. I had no idea why. And again, I've uh, you know thought about that a lot since then. It wasn't Washington, D.C. It wasn't London. It wasn't Moscow. It wasn't New York City. It wasn't any of these other places. The image that kept going through my head for some reason when, I, when we realized what was about to happen, when God showed us the truth, the image that kept going through my head was Paris, France crumbling to the ground. It was disturbing. And uh, when you watch the rest of this video, you'll maybe start to see why I might have had that. We're telling you to leave the United States for a reason. There is nothing unless the United States repents for what they've done. And that starts with everybody from the top down. There's no hope for that place. God's told us to get out of that place for a reason. The rest of the world, I, I would say the rest of the world... They need to just uh, be careful about listening to what the United States is going to tell them to do because uh, the United States is going to be made an example for the rest of the world. That's what this boils down to. The rest of the world will get a choice. They can either uh, do what the United States says and get the same treatment or they can stop doing 
what the United States has done. And again, when you watch the rest of this video, you'll see why France in particular is connected to this. In 2020, I had no idea what France had scheduled for 2024. I had no idea. So it's really bizarre that the image that kept going through my head was Paris crumbling to the ground. And I'm not telling you guys that I seen a vision from God or anything like that. I'm simply saying that when we knew what was about to happen in December of 2020, we were waiting. That's what it boils down to. So when it was done, like I said, when God showed us, uh, when it was done, when God showed us what was about to happen, the image of Paris crumbling to the ground is what kept playing through my mind. That's what I'm wanting to make you guys understand. And it's for a reason. And I'm not saying this to be mean or scare anybody. We're saying this so the people that are in France that hear this later, that they understand it was told to them ahead of time and that they'll maybe not do what the United States is going to tell them to do or what the people out of the United States, that maybe they'll learn from their past behavior that maybe their fathers, and when I say fathers, I'm talking about the French people, their fathers might have made some bad decisions and might have done some things that they shouldn't have done. That's what they need to think about. And maybe they need to rethink the uh, history of their nation you know, and their modern nation. Rethink, you know, its origins and maybe maybe look at it a different way. Maybe they made a mistake. And, uh, you know, maybe they don't need to go the way of the United States. That's what this boils down to. Um, there's nothing else I can say in this video. It's It was a... This was a tough video to make. That's what this boils down to. We were there exactly a month to the day before... And uh, as you can see now, there's basically nothing left standing. So we hope this will do you guys some good over the next year and a half. Again, this is so you'll know that everything is true and that we, we put our heart into this. We went to these places for you guys. So we finally got here to Ephesus. Uh, the name of the town in uh, modern times is called Selchuk. I think is how they pronounce it. Sel Selchuk. Selchuk. Sel Sel yeah. Anyways, it's uh, the a city built around the old city of Ephesus. And uh, <clears throat> first night here, we had an earthquake. Uh, mm -hmm. 4.1. Yeah. Which uh, woke, woke her up. And uh, I was up when it happened. And... Uh, you know, it just reminded us of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what we were told was going to be happening all over the place. It was, uh, you know, it was a unique experience for us. We've never had an earthquake before. So I've never this experienced was, an earthquake in my life. Yeah, me either. So I've been through tornadoes, hurricanes, all that stuff, but no earthquakes. Mm -hmm. This is the first time for me. Anyways. Nothing happened, but we felt it. Felt it, and you know, as you can see in the background, we're we're up on a hill, a high hill, on the opposite side of the city. From one end of the city to the other, uh, the dogs were barking. Uh, you know, uh, after this happened, it was it's pretty uh, pretty interesting to listen to. So they say there's uh, something about animals they know just shortly ahead of time. You know, mm -hmm. um, they definitely know after. Uh, an earthquake happens. Uh, we, I can tell you, I just seen it last night. It was pretty interesting. Like I said, from one end of the valley to the other here in the city, the dogs were going crazy, and uh, that was right after the earthquake happened. So mm -hmm. it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Makes you think. Yeah, makes you think. How can your life end just from the like that? Second. Yeah. See, people need to go back and read the Old Testament a little bit more carefully. Uh, you don't play around with God. Uh, there's no afterlife. These pastors and teachers and all these people teaching you the evil stuff about God, saying God's doing these kind of evil things, you know, to people that are outside because they know, they understand what it means when they tell people stories like that. They understand there are children dying all over the world that have never, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not part of their group. 
part of their, uh, what they're calling Christians. They're not Christians, by the way. Uh, but nevertheless, they're not part of their little uh, pastoral synagogue groups is what I'll call them. Because uh, what they are, synagogues, I mean, and it's what they are. That's what they're called in the book of Revelation. I'm not going to like mince words about it. If they teach lies, I don't know why. Anyways, um, not going to not gonna mince words about it anymore. I'm not, when I say this, I'm not being mean to anybody. Because we don't want to offend anybody, but there is no nice There's way no nice to way say, say it, it. Yeah. I guess. If people are telling lies, and they're telling you lies for money, and they're telling you lies for money about who Jesus Christ really is and who God really is and what the Bible's really saying, and they're twisting that around and they're telling you that it says basically the same old thing that all pagan religions right back to Egypt. And when I say pagan, we don't mean what you guys think, a bone in the hair, you know, or a bone through the nose, or mm-hmm. feathers and all this stuff. That's not what pagans were. Pagans were civilized people. You need to go look at who the Canaanites were. They were the Phoenicians. That's who they became. These were the smart people. They were the traders. They were yeah. the people that had civilization. A good example of yeah. pagan. These people telling you they're Christians, they're not. If they're teaching you lies, if they're telling you lies about God for money, if they're telling you a pagan version of Jesus Christ that goes, again, all the way back to Egypt, they're just teaching you the book of the dead. And that's how God's got them in a trap. God got them to print his words, the Bible. You know, that's what that's what most of it is. Parables and po- poetic literature is the way the world would call it, but parables. It doesn't change the fact that it's true and it came from God. God got them to print that and see it as no kind of a threat to them because they thought it was talking about the same old thing. They thought it was basically just a Jewish knockoff of the Egyptian Book of the Dead and all of the other pagan religions around them, you know, that basically worshipped their imaginations and afterlifes. At the beginning of December, we went to Ephesus to start our trip to the seven cities here that were listed in the book of Revelation. We thought it was a little unusual because when we arrived to start our trip, the first night there in Ephesus, we had an earthquake and it woke my wife up. And... I didn't say anything to my wife at the time, but I knew deep down that there was a reason that that happened. So we continued on for the rest of December from Ephesus, as you see the seven cities listed here. We went to Smyrna, we went to Pergamon, we went to Thyatira, we went to Sardis, we went to Philadelphia, and we went to Laodicea. And we have some important messages and uh, video from each of these places. Each place, there was a, each place has a meaning. And we didn't go to these places because we think the places themselves have any great importance. What we did know is we had faith that if there was anything in these places that we needed to find, we would find them. And Jesus Christ showed us everything we needed to know. Some of this so far we've made known to you. There's some more that's to come. Anyways, this took us uh, the better part of December to do. We finished the trip with Laodicea. And then we went back to our home base in Antalya. Turkey's a a pretty large country. Uh, for, you know, compared to other uh, countries in Europe, Western Europe, and uh, especially the countries in the Middle East here. Countries, uh, Turkey's very large. So we got back to Antalya, and we had got a lot of information from the seven cities that we had been in, and we were ready to start putting together some of these messages. And I knew there was still two places that we needed to go before we left Turkey. Because one of these places in particular, Antioch, had some uh, had some archaeological evidence in the city that we wanted to uh, share with all of you. 
I started getting uh, very. I started getting a very uh, strong feeling near uh, the end of uh, December, the beginning of January, that we actually that we needed to go and do this. So we, uh, it was a more of a spontaneous thing. We had planned out our trip to Ephesus a little bit better. The trip to Antioch and Tarsus was a little more spontaneous, and uh, we decided to go and get this information on January 6th. To give you guys a little bit of an idea about the distance here, from where we were at, that was about a 10-hour drive. We had no idea what would happen afterwards, but I know we were allowed to go and get the information and make the videos we needed to make in Antakya, or what is Antioch, in the Hatay region of Turkey, and if we hadn't have done that then, if I hadn't listened to the feeling I got to telling me to go do this, we wouldn't have this information and we wouldn't have made this video and uh, we know now it was for a reason. The earthquake hit exactly one month to the day, exactly one month to the day that we left Antakya or Antioch. I doubt from what I'm seeing the damage is so extensive From what I'm seeing here, the damage is so extensive to the city. It looks like a different. It looks like a completely different place than it was a month ago, when we drove through here. I'm doubting that uh, if the place is this damaged, most likely the museum as well that we went to, uh, we would not be we would not have had any of this information to present to you guys. This is a horrible thing that's happened here, and uh, a lot of people are dead. And uh, we traveled to these places for a reason. We did all of what we've done so far, so the, those of you that are listening to us will know that we've been sincere about this. We've done this to try to help people. We don't want to see everybody dead. And what we know is that everybody on this planet will be just as dead as everybody in this city that I'm looking at right here if they don't stop doing what they're doing. That's what this boils down to. There's no nice way to say this. Uh, we don't want to see everybody die. That's why we've been doing this, and we could have, uh, I could have sat anywhere in the world, me and, me and Anna could have sat anywhere in the world, and we could have made videos from, you know, our home, any, any place on this planet. That's what everybody does. We've traveled to these places for you guys. So you guys would know that we are being sincere and that we are serious. Uh, we've, we've given just about everything we have in this world, monetarily at least, uh, to do this. Because we know there's nothing waiting on the other side of this other than Jesus Christ. That's what this boils down to. People either accept the truth and they enter into life or else there's no hope. There's nothing else waiting. And uh, he was kind to let us know the things that uh, Anna and I know. And some of you listening may know some of these things as well. What we want you to understand is we went to these cities to get information for you guys. So you would know for sure after April, you would know for sure that we were being sincere. And you would know for sure that what we're showing you is true. And you would know for sure the difference between what we're telling you and what the other people are going to tell you. There's been a lot of stuff covered up concerning Christianity. The bottom line is organized Christianity is not the truth. That's, that's what it boils down to. That's 
bottom line, that's not what the Bible is saying. And uh, they've taken, they did exactly what we're told by Paul in Romans. You know, they changed the truth of God into a lie and they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. That's what these type of people did. And that's what it boils down to. And unfortunately, they've got a lot of people underneath them that don't know any better. That's who we're concerned about. That's what we're doing all of this for. We don't want to see those people tricked. The people that don't want anything to do with the living God, they don't like what Jesus Christ tells them to do. They don't want to stop being evil. They, they, don't, they don't want to stop doing the things they're doing in life. Those people I can't help. The people we can help, though, and that's all of us that are willing to do this, that are willing to lay our lives down here this last little bit of time we've got left on this planet Earth. Those of us willing to do that, it's the other people that are being fooled by these people in charge. And what I mean by people in charge, I don't mean the governments necessarily. I just mean the people that are given respect in the world, you know whether it's uh, religious or, you know, scientific, uh, whatever, these type of people that are fooling the simpler people. It's our job to try to save the simpler people from them. They don't know any better. So we're trying to save the people out of this that don't know they're being fooled and maybe still don't understand what's happening yet. Because after April, we understand that what's coming next well, they're going to feel like they have an excuse to come after us. That's the whole point. That's the conclusion I've come to now. The world will pretty much support it, is what I believe. Uh, they're going to feel justified for doing the things they're going to do to us. And, uh, you know, it's something, you know, it's a hard thing for us to kind of, uh, it's a hard thing for us to uh, deal with at the moment. The fact that we know... People are not going to like us for what we're doing, and they're going to think we're, you know, we're their enemy, and we're not. And that's the saddest part of all of this is God's, you know, God's trying to save everybody, and He is sincerely begging people to stop doing what they're doing. It's going to take a lot more of this type of stuff to get people's attention. The bottom line is what they have done kicked all of this off. The reason Anna and I are having to do this, I'm just going to be completely honest with you, is because I campaigned for Donald Trump in uh, 2016. Hello, everyone. This is Donald Trump, hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington, with an important announcement to make. I'm doing my first official Donald J. Trump. I never did that for another president in my entire life. It was the biggest mistake I ever made in my life. I let fear get a hold of me and, and scare me so bad that I voted for the very man. And, and I should have seen him coming. You know, I, I knew deep down that I shouldn't have been doing it. That, that was the, that's the worst part of this, is I knew that I shouldn't have voted for this man. And I knew I shouldn't do the things I was doing at the time. But I was so scared of the alternative. I let fear, let's put it this way, I let fear take control and I let fear push me into doing something that I shouldn't have done. My wife and I were not the kind of people that get involved in politics and stuff like, like that. Never, you know. But we got involved in it then because the thought of a nuclear war the thought of scary things that, you know, got, you know, these uh, ideas pushed, you know, on us during that campaign as being alternatives if he didn't get elected caused us to vote for somebody that I would have otherwise never voted for. And I remember at the time I talked people, I talked people into voting for that man. And, uh, I told him, I said, you know, I said, he's probably, I said, you know, he, he, 
he's rich and I want to think he's the one rich person out there that's different than the rest of them you know I know the business world and you you know you don't get rich by being honest usually but you know hey he's got kids he's got a family you know surely he doesn't want to destroy everybody you know himself uh, having a family and all of that and uh, you know that's at least something and I did tell him I said you know I said, he'll probably betray us, you know, but what's the alternative? That was the way I looked at it at the time. It was the biggest mistake I made in my life. <sighs> because everything that's about to happen, I'm responsible for. That's the way I feel in my heart. That if I hadn't have done that, if I hadn't have prayed to God for that man, that none of this stuff would be happening now. That's why we're here in Turkey. That's what this really boils down to. We've done a, 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 there's no easy, there's no nice way to say this. We've done a great evil. And uh, when I say we, I just mean uh, people like me and uh, specifically myself. Uh, we were the people out there that knew better and we knew better in other words, we could spot a wolf coming, and we knew better than to tell other people to follow him. But this time around, they got us because they played on our fears, and that's that's what this boils down to. And everything that happens now is because we did that, because we got afraid and did something we shouldn't have done. And, uh, you know, I would recommend everybody go and read the 24th chapter of Isaiah carefully. And uh, let this be a good lesson to you. Uh, it mentions in there the people fleeing from the noise, you know, basically running, running from the fear that they're the ones that are going to fall in the pit. This is what we're trying to avoid now. So because I did this for that man and uh, yeah, because people like me did this, this is what we're responsible for. And that's what we're doing here in Turkey, and uh, that's why it's not going to be an easy time for us for the next uh, year and a half. We have to do what we have to do, and we'll do as long as we're here what we're supposed to do. And uh, this time around, I won't listen to my head. And if uh, I can give you guys any um, encouragement, that's the encouragement I'd like to give you. Don't let fear or emotions run your heart. The words of God are true. They're there in the Bible for a reason. So, nevertheless, that's what this all boils down to. The earthquake there that just happened, again, it happened exactly a month after we were there. It's not an accident. God's sending these warnings for a reason because what's about to happen after next April is going to be way worse. It's going to be way worse for the whole world. It's not just going to be a turkey thing or a one country thing. This is coming on to the whole world. What city are we in now? Tarsus. Tarsus. Okay. <laughs> what did you say? Moving towards Syrian border. Okay. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We're looking for a character named Orpheus, right? Yeah. Not Morpheus. Yeah. Orpheus. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about 16 kilometers outside of Antakya, or Antioch. What was Antioch? Pretty interesting. Take it over in that direction. See. He said not much left from Antioch. What? They said not. There is not much left from. Oh, from the old city. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing maybe that's an Antioch up there on the hill. I guess. Archaeological museum right there. Yeah. 
there in the hill? Is that old forts or is that mm -mm. part of the world? We went to these cities to try to uncover for you guys what has been covered up and to share with you um, what we would find. We understood that not everybody had uh, the same opportunities that we had in our life. And there are a lot of you out there that, you know, you, you, you may have, you know, you may have never left the home you're in. You know, you may, I, we don't know. We, we don't know individually each person's situation that we've spoke with. Uh, you know, there's plenty of people that haven't had the opportunities we've had in life to do the things we've done. And we, we wanted to, to do these good things for you. That's what this boiled down to. So you could help other people. That's, that's what this all boils down to here. These people here in the city that are dead, there, there's no hope for them. You know, there's no nice way to say this. What we're concerned about is the people that are still alive. The people that maybe will change their minds about things. The people that will maybe repent. Anna and I were discussing, it's, it's really odd, it was before this earthquake happened, Anna and I were discussing this recently. Uh, matter of fact, it was a couple days before this earthquake happened. Uh, we were uh, driving back to our apartment, and we were discussing some of the things I guess people have said to us over the past few years, and some of the people that we've known in our past life. And uh, these would be reprobates. So when we say reprobates, we're talking about the type of person that would look at devastation like this and tell us that that's simply nature. Because that's what me and my wife were discussing recently. We've known for, well, we've known since uh, January of 2020 that God has tried to get people's attention. And when, in the past, we've tried to bring this up to people that we know, it's effectively what we've been told by some of these people, that it's just nature. Yeah, That's a reprobate. If a meteor strike is what destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah, God claimed it. That's what my wife said. He took credit for it. There's no doubt. To a reprobate, they're just saying it's nature. That's what this boils down to. To these type of people, they're never going to believe anything we have to say. Period. They're going to refuse to believe. That's a reprobate mind. God is a spirit, and if he's telling you the truth, and you're alive, and you refuse to accept the truth he's telling you through his servants, then there's nothing he can do for you. You're made in his creation, not the other way around. You have to listen to what he says that's true. If he takes credit for something, he takes credit for it. It's not nature. That's what a reprobate is, by the way. And I'm bringing this up, uh, I guess, concerning all of this. So we're about 40 miles from Aleppo. Yeah. I think it's the... the, the you cannot go any further. This is the southern, like, border of Turkey. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So... Where are we again? We are in the Antioch. Antioch. Antioch.
is a place where first Christians were called Christians. And that word Christian means Christ in us. It means truth in us, the spirit of truth, the sincerity, not fakers. This is offering table four and thirteen and to the seasons. the city where uh, Apostle Paul was born in. If you look at Orphus, he's wearing the, the Persian cap. And uh, actually, this uh, Persian cap is mascot of um, a summer 
Olympics of 2024 that is supposed to take place in Paris, France. The Virgin Cup has um, a history um, of French-American revolution. But its history goes back further. Uh, it, yes, the history goes back a lot further. Uh, and uh, it wasn't like always actually red. I think uh, it became red after that uh, French Revolution, if I'm not mistaken. But it represents all <laughs> rebels, pretty much. Just the Earl here with Orpheus, depicted playing the lyre, yeah, with the animals around him. This was pulled from a public structure in the town of Tarsus. That's where the Apostle Paul was from. Orpheus, uh, in Greek mythology, was a poet who had, well, let me, let me back up. He was a reform, reformation of the Dionysian mysteries or religion. Orpheus was a poet, was like a hero. He went into the underworld, yeah, and he came out of the underworld. His cult is closely attached with Pythagorean school of thought and Plato's school of thought, yeah? That's where the whole concept of the eternal soul, apparently in Western culture, comes from. It's from this myth and this Platonic slash Pythagorean school of thought. Orpheus, yeah, was this mythological character, again, who descended into the underworld, yeah? And in his, in his cult, in the, uh, I believe it was, I believe they started reformation of the Dionysian mysteries around the first and second century AD in the Roman times. They were having problems with uh, the Dionysian cults. It was a lot of uh, bad stuff going on, and I guess, uh, you know, they were trying to rein in some of this uh, bad behavior. So they, uh, they began reforming the myth, and out of it came, you know, the or what we know now as the uh, Orpheism. Yep. And that particular cult yeah, taught this uh, resurrection in the afterlife, but they focused on the death of Dionysus. And that was the central theme in the cult, was to focus on the pain and suffering that Dionysus went through when he died. Sounds very familiar to uh, modern-day Christians that go to, uh, you know, uh, Christian you know, churches, uh, the same type of stuff. Sounds very Catholic is what I'm getting at. Uh, anyways, the focus, central focus, was on the death and suffering of Dionysus at the hands of the Titans. And again, this was the Orphean, this was the Orphean, this was the Orphean myth, or the Orphean, uh, I guess, school of thought. Yeah, it was the system, right? And Dionysus was killed, he was dismembered by the Titans, and Zeus struck the Titans with a thunderbolt, yeah, and out of the Titan's ashes, yeah, they had uh, devoured uh, Dionysus, but out of the Titan's ashes came humanity, right? And humanity had a dual nature. Humanity's body was the Titans. It was the ashes of the Titans, but humanity's good side was the eternal soul, and that's what Dionysus was, right? I.e., this is the Orphic tradition, or the Orpheus school of thought. It was their, their religion, and they taught that the natural world was bad, yeah, and that the people people have to follow a strict lifestyle. In other words, they need to refrain, refrain from like sensual pleasures of uh, meat eating. That means they were uh, vegetarians. Uh, this particular cult, and they couldn't get involved in uh, any more of the sexual you know, things that were going on under the Dionysian mysteries. In other words, they abstained from sex and all of these other things. And, you know, very similar to what the early church fathers began doing. Because these church fathers, they weren't following what the Bible was telling you. They were following this religion right here is what it boils down to. Everything that they teach you is basically Orphean tradition. It's the myth of Orpheus. And that when you die, if you were initiated into this uh, Orpheus system, when you die, your soul would go on in the afterlife and spend all of eternity next to Dionysus and all of the heroes, right? 
so you would be resurrected in the underworld alive, yeah? As long as you did what, you know, the Orphean tradition told you to do, right? And if you didn't do this, you were recycled over and over again in the underworld, basically like reincarnation. Well, you know, that was reformed a little bit later, with, you know, under the Orthodox and Catholic system, and we ob obviously have them pulling in the concept of eternal fire, but instead of eternal fire being in this world, they've taught it to you the Orphic way, where they say it's an eternal fire in the underworld, so they've changed God into something even worse than what the pagans believed. Anyways, my point I'm getting at here is that hat has everything to do with it. It tells you the school of thought that was influencing Second Temple Judaism and early what they tell you is Christianity that isn't. Real Christianity has nothing to do with this type of stuff. We're here in Antioch right now. In Antioch, people were called Christians first. The word Christian means Jesus Christ lives in us. His spirit lives in us. It's the word of God and it's the spirit of truth. There's no truth to this type of stuff any more than there's truth to the same school of thought that they had concerning the eternal soul. The Bible doesn't say that at all. Yeah, truth is truth. And what Christians would do is engage in sincerity and truth, i.e., that's what the real communion was, a break in the body, yeah, and engaging in this sincerity and truth, and we would speak the truth with each other and tell the people the truth out of what? There's no afterlife like that. There's only resurrection of life and resurrection of death. That's it. That's the Bible. That's the whole thing. This life is your opportunity to make the right decision. If you want to continue on in the universe, in God's creation, you have to do what the Son tells you to do. That's what the Word of God is in the Bible. Jesus Christ has already told us the truth. He's told us everybody who wants to live can come to him and live, but you have to eat and drink what he's offering. That's doing what he says. That's taking the words of God and putting it in you and actually believing it and doing it and believing it to the point that you would give up your life in this world, around you, in hopes that he will resurrect you again from the dead. That's real faith. This stuff that people is calling Christianity today, it's a trick. It was a trick by Second Temple Jews that brought in these very doctrines of demons because it's interesting. When I meant when we're talking about Orpheus here, the Apostle Paul tells us, now the Spirit speaks expressly in latter times. That means the Spirit of truth was telling us. This was Paul knowing this at that time. That in the latter days, some would depart from the faith, giving heed. That means listening to, seducing spirits. It's not talking about something supernatural. It's talking about other doctrines. Seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, i.e. imaginary gods like Orpheus here from Tarsus. The Apostle Paul would have known about this really well because this was where the Apostle Paul was from. Though this came a little bit later, apparently. Nevertheless, he said, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, yeah, forbidding marriage, which was another thing Orphic tradition did, and the early church fathers engaged in, and commanding to abstain from foods that God gave for, thank, for all for thanksgiving, right? The foods... He's talking about the very system that I'm pointing at on the floor here, Orpheus. He condemned it right there. He's telling you that's a doctrine of demons. And what was their primary doctrine in Orpheus? Anna will explain to you. Orpheus also represents a third system known as a fake belief, uh, which considers all the living beings as important and claims that the soul is immortal. What you're saying is the concept of the immortal soul, which was something that the Hebrew Bible, like the Bible, condemned. Basically, as right. this was something that the Bible said wasn't the case. Yes, but um, a lot of Christian organizations right now that claim to be Christian, that's what they practice right now. What do the Muslims believe? Same thing. Muslims exactly believe the same, same thing. identical thing, don't they? So Muslims and the people calling themselves Christians and the people calling themselves second, like Jews, mm -hmm. rabbinic Judaism, they believe the same thing as well, right? 
they all have one thing in common, this orphic belief that the Bible actually condemned them. That's what we got in trouble for, for going and engaging in stuff like that at Val Pure, right? It's a sickness. Uh, uh, the Orpheus was behind the uh, reforming Dionysus, and then Pythagoras was behind the reforming uh, Orpheus, and uh, Plato was behind reforming Pythagoras. Exactly. Yes, so. and after that, it kind of like spread. Spread everywhere, right? Everywhere. So when you see the church fathers like Jerome the Apostate, or I believe Justin the Martyr, I can't remember if it's Jerome or Justin or both. I know one of the two actually wrote, they said that Plato was a proto-Christian. Yeah. See, because again, their version of Christianity, this is not the Christianity that the Apostle Paul preached. This is not the Christianity that Jesus Christ is. This is Orpheism. The people have called him Christianity, but a bunch of people, for the love of money, you know, turned away from the faith exactly as the Apostle Paul tells Timothy. Yeah, for the love of money is the root of all evil that some, having coveted after, have erred concerning the faith. Yeah, well, this is that error right here. It's Orpheus. We there are so many similarities between Orpheism and, um, like, Catholicism and Orthodox, Orthodox, but Protestants. It's, it's very hard to differentiate because... They all believe the same thing. They just have they different... They believe the same thing. Different versions of the afterlife, right? Uh -huh. And then they yeah. play these word games where they say the resurrection is talking about the afterlife. The resurrection isn't talking about the afterlife, is it? Life continues on. Jesus Christ is the foundation of the world. And what did the Apostle Paul tell us? He told us that it's world without end. Amen, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're told. There's no end to the world. People just sleep in the world. That's it. There's no underworld, no afterworld. Yeah? So what these people are teaching is Christianity. It's a, it's, a, it's a mockery of it. The people who realize that they're being lied to, like, you know, in the church organizations, they run away from it when they figure out that these people aren't actually telling you the truth about what the Bible says. They... A lot of people leave discouraged. But nevertheless, the reason this is so important, and I've explained to them, what, what is going on right now? What's actually happening in the world at the moment? What do most people not know yet is actually in control of a lot of human thought? No, uh, artificial intelligence is in control right now. Uh, it's very hard to actually, I guess, not to give in and... Uh, no fight it because uh, we spend with the uh, computers, phones, yeah. and the tablets probably most of our day life. Uh, and um, artificial intelligence de decides ultimately what information each person needs to get. In Orpheic tradition, do you believe the Orpheic Platonic school of thought you know, that you're an immortal soul? eternal soul and that when you die you come alive like the Muslims the people calling themselves Christians they're not, it's Nicolaitan doctrine that's exactly what it is and Rabbinic Judaism which like all they did it's missed, that's what Mystery Babylon is it's the incorporation of all of this garbage, all of these lies from the world around into the truth if you believe that sickness right, and you believe that's what like the Bible is telling you when it's not then you won't see the threat that's right in front of you because you think you're immortal, right? But the problem is the thing that's about to eat everybody, which is the artificial intelligence they created, and the reason the real God of the Bible, the real Jesus Christ, will destroy this entire earth now, is because of the actual demon that people have made into life, which is this high-level artificial intelligence. Their thing has people fooled into thinking they're something more than they are, they see no threat. They think that the computer could never be like them, could never outsmart them, could never do the things better than them because they're more they, than uh, the computer most is. Most of the people think it's, a com it's just a computer. We can also, yeah. oh, 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 we can all, always turn it off because yeah. we're in control. Yeah. And they, they don't even understand yeah. how it advanced. 
artificial intelligence is right now? No. But don't you understand? A lot smarter than you are. And you cannot just turn it off. <laughs> exactly. And it's, if you think that you're immortal and when you die, you come alive, then you see, you, you don't see the real fears right in front of you. Yes, because, because you, you think, think, so what? So what, right? You do exactly what the people at Jonestown did, right? Mm -hmm. They drank the Kool-Aid right along with Jim Jones because they believed that the Bible was giving you Orphic teachings mm -hmm. instead of telling you the truth, that your flesh and blood comes from the dust of the ground. That's what it boils down to. The only immortality is in Jesus Christ. And we have to do what he says if we want to live. He's our boss. We're not immortal outside of him. And the lake of fire isn't in the Orphic underworld, burning people alive for not knowing his name. The lake of fire is about to be what, you know? Lake of fire is God, the wrath of God. That's him destroying this whole earth and everything with it. And you know, what do the physicists tell you? It's possible that the oceans, what can happen to the oceans? Uh, o oceans can catch on fire. And the earth turns into a miniature it's, star. It's hard for me to wrap my head around it, around it, but actually it is possible. Exactly. It'll burn right through to the core. That's what will happen under certain conditions. Well, and we this know is our punishment for disobedience. And hard to explain because people have been brainwashed for centuries and they're comfortable with what they know. They're comfortable with thinking that something's better Wait. waiting for them. They just need to say a rhyme, say, say a chant and Well, the scary thing and what they should actually think about is it's always this. It's, you know, you go with their version of Christianity, which is Nicolaitanism, and you know, any of the other religions out there, Islam, all of it is, they get rewarded and their enemies get punished. And mm -hmm. post Second Temple period, it was a lake of fire in their aftermath, right? None of them ever consider what if we're wrong? <laughs> and, you know, that shows like how like blind they are even to that. Mm -hmm. It's the nine lines. Nobody says, I'm going to be roasted in the lake of fire. It's always the other Because thing, I'm not right? that bad. Yeah. There's always somebody worse Exactly. Than me. And what God was saying and what the Apostle John was getting in the book of Revelation and what Jesus was discussing is eternal death. The lake of fire on this planet again is when this whole earth is burned up. Mm -hmm. There's no more life here. God has a son from this earth, and it's everybody in Jesus Christ. Your opportunity to live is now. Right? Tell me. Yes, you, you don't get a second chance. This is your chance. The only one. You can either accept truth, what God's saying in the Bible, and what your eyes are showing you around you. It's not in our imagination, is it? What's yeah. happening right now in the world is actually happening. It's about to get a lot worse really fast. And then you're just pushing off the inevitable. If you don't deal with it today and you don't start ripping the band-aid off, it's going to hurt even worse because this computer, guess what? We're telling you this whole Orphea thing that we've been talking to you about, this second temple teaching of them coming in and conquering the pagans with Jesus Christ, just teaching you the Orpheus version of them as Jesus Christ that has double X's, double marks, double columns, double crosses, literally is the mark. Yeah. This is going to get them in trouble and you in trouble. The computer knows it. It understands all of that. It's going to force everybody on the planet to take it. So the Greek Orthodox Basilica, the church here in Tarsus, right? Yes. So they call this the... St. Paul Memorial Museum. Yeah, St. Paul Memorial Museum. Yeah. Church in Tarsus, Turkey, right now. If you look up, you see the same sign as we showed you. It is the same Ephesus wheel or double mark, which is double cross. Right, 
this church too. This church was built in the 1850s, so it's much later than every other site that we showed you before. Yeah, you see also your hill came out. Up on the hill. So again, you've got right here the double marks which is the two tabs of the double crosses, yeah? What they're telling you, the two cross mm -hmm. sticks of Pharaoh that yeah. came later the X's, which is what a tab is in Hebrew, or the mark, what that letter rep what that letter represents was the mark in Ezekiel 9 4 that was put on the foreheads. That wasn't literal though. Mm -hmm. That's not what God's saying. They took it as literal. And those double marks there. And you've got a direct connection here in the 1850s between those double marks that are still honoring, yeah? And the triangle up there with the all-seeing eye at the center, yeah? Which is Orpheus, yeah? Pythagoras school of thought, right? Mm -hmm. Right there with that triangle. That triangle, yeah, is in the same building as this. You know, it's kind of evidence right there this school of thought continued right on in the Orphic tradition of an eternal, immortal soul and an afterlife. This is all like, these are horrible lies, yeah, that were told by people pretending to be, pretending to give you the good news or the real truth of Jesus Christ. They gave you a bunch of lies. They conquered people's fears. What I mean by that is they took people's fears of an afterlife, which isn't true, and used them to conquer the people and scare them to death and make them think horrible, evil things about God so people would submit. That's not God. These are just pains of people. So, yeah, this is the Cleopatra Gate. Apparently, at one time, the water... The water supposedly came up this far, this gate was rebuilt, but this marks supposedly the uh, commemoration of where Cleopatra met with Mark Anthony and they united against uh, uh, Octavius, or, you know, who later became Caesar Augustus. Yeah, this was the gate representing the uh, big uniting between uh, Cleopatra and uh, Mark Anthony. It's called the, uh, in, uh, Later time, it was called the Feminine Gate. Uh, let's go take a look. Right, Again, this would have been the spot, they say, was this gate on this end of town where the water came up to that Cleopatra and Mark Anthony joined? We're doing what? Antique Road. This is what would have been here when Paul lived here, right? Yeah. About that time. Well, let's go see it. This is uh, Antique Road. Um, it's from the time when Paul was here. The Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. This is why it was called Paul or Saul of Tarsus. This would have been Tarsus at that time. So that's what's left of the road. That's the main thing. But it's still there like that. Massachusetts, like next to MIT or Harvard. So, I guess I'll just let you. No, so, uh, we just want to tell you we were just at the museum in uh, Tarsus, 
We're yeah. at the museum in Horses well, Rock Hall. We were inside. Yeah, yeah. we were inside, and uh, we didn't realize that we cannot take pictures, and we found some very interesting stuff. Yeah, out of all the museums in Turkey we've been in, have you ever seen a sign that says you can't take a photograph at all? Yeah, th no. that was the first, well, first, time. first time. And what we found... It's interesting. Yeah, in this museum was something that makes you kind of... Um, understand the connection between uh, Orpheism yeah. and uh, what the Phrygian cap Phrygian, is. Yeah, what Phrygian cap is. What this has to do with rebellion or revolutions, mm -hmm. and what it has to do with the worship of uh, basically the ball cycle, what they would have called in the Middle East, or Osiris, like life and death, that whole uh, you know vegetation god. Of uh, regeneration in the underworld. Oh, let's, yeah. let's go ahead and finish. It. Yeah. Anyways, out of all the places we've been, though, we haven't seen mm -hmm. any no photography signs here. But this is Tarsus. This is the town where Paul was from, and what we've seen in there is very clear to us. That Phrygian cap mm -hmm. that you see all the way from the United States on the Capitol building there. Again, this is the Phrygian cap. That's the uh, mascot. For 2024 uh, Summer, Summer Olympics, Olympics for, in, in, in Paris. Paris. It was a symbol of the Jacobians during the French Revolution. It was a symbol of the American Revolution. That Phrygian cap you find in murals, yeah, all the way down to Judea or what, what would be Israel today. The bottom line is here in this museum where Paul was from, you, f you find the Phrygian cap associated with the god Attis, yeah which is basically a type of Dionysus, or it's very clear incorporated into um, the Pythagorean thought, the uh, Orpheism. And uh, Attis was this uh, god, yeah, that the Phrygians apparently incorporated when they had conquered the area into their gods. And it's just, again, it's just this agriculture deity. Yeah, that's all it is. It's Osiris. It's just another version of it of this whole life and death and the underworld and the eternal afterlife and all of that. Addis is seen as a character who he castrates himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he's struck with frenzy by one of the gods. He castrates himself and he dies. He doesn't get married. And one of the other gods goes and has Zeus keep his body because the other god that struck him with frenzy apparently... Uh, repented and felt bad that they caused this to happen to Addis, so had Zeus keep Addis's body preserved as a youth forever without decaying, mm -hmm. yeah, and, uh, you know, this is the whole, and, and he's associated, basically, with the uh, winter and spring cycles, and was honored with the uh, spring festivals, kind of like Easter or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, of uh, life coming up out of the earth. Anyways, that cap associated with that, it's with death and resurrection. Again, you know, the same Orpheic belief, that death and resurrection are like Dionysus. Basically, rebellion or revolution. Yeah, you think you've destroyed something, but it comes back again. That's the conclusion we're coming to with the Phrygian hat, why they chose it. They'll tell you that it was a mistake and that they chose the Phrygian cap by accident. And what they originally meant was like the, I think it was the, Pelis is what they called it in the Roman times, the hat of a free man or a Roman citizen or a slave who had been made free. I don't think that's it at all. I think it's got a very clear, uh, very clear origin, at least why they would have used that hat right here in Tarsus. And it has to do with uh, revolution. Yeah. In other words, they associate it with this myth of death and resurrection, or as the Germans would have called it, you know, you would have heard this talk during World War II, the phoenix, yeah, out of the ashes rises the phoenix, right? You know, again, well, it's the same thing. That's what that Phrygian cap represents, and it's got everything to do with this underworld religion that they worship, because again, you can't get people to go fight and kill for you unless you can do what in it? You've got to convince them that they're going to be rewarded yeah, for this, Yeah, right? you promised them something. You promise them something in the afterlife or you promise them a resurrection yeah they'll just tell you what's well, the afterlife now yeah this resurrection and you continue on intellectually in the afterlife yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. you're waiting for the new resurrection in the afterlife but you promise them something and if you look at how this connects to everything else we've done in the videos so far the double x's which are the marks 
That's exactly what Judas Maccabee was promising. The Hebrews, yeah, or the, you know, during the Second Temple period when they revolted against the Greeks, was that their works, all of the you know, fighting and revolution that they had engaged in, it would be remembered. This is really bad, but this is apparently the truth, and we think it's really just odd that you can't take pictures of inside that museum. The Phrygian cap is everywhere. It's because this museum is like full of it. Full of it, and this is stuff that would have been here. The Apostle Paul would have known very well mm -hmm. what this stuff was. So the Apostle Paul was clearly rejecting all of this, and when he tells us that these people would bring in doctrines of demons, mm -hmm. this is what he was talking about with the, you know, Orpheic traditions, yeah? He would have understood it very clearly. You know, the Phrygian cap and all of it. This is something that he warned about. And it's exactly what they did. And you can see it around today. It's everywhere. When you look at what they're telling you Christianity is, it's not. It's, it's this stuff right here. It's just the same old thing that God always hated. And this is why the real Jesus Christ tells you in the book of Revelation, he hates the stuff that the Nicolaitans do. I mean, it's the very thing that he always had problems with humanity kind of uh, devolving to, mm -hmm. worshiping death, yeah, and thinking out of the earth, just like Cain did, that out of the earth life comes. And that's not the case. Cain was blind just like these people are. Without the rain, that means without it coming from above, without God's hand, there's no life anywhere. Life doesn't come up out of nothing. But for these people with their hats and the religions they teach you, that there's some other, some other universe out there, there's some other existence, some other world, mm -hmm. they, they're too blind, they never see it. That's why they have no problems killing people. If man was made in God's image and you kill another human being, think about that for a minute. Think about what you're doing. 